Hello, my name is Elaine Nichols. I'm the Habitat Restoration Program Coordinator for Friends of the Verde River. Friends is a nonprofit organization and our mission is to work collaboratively for a healthy flowing Verde River system. We focus our work on restoring habitat, sustaining river flows, and building supportive communities. We engage in a combination of boots on the ground projects and policy solutions guided by sound conservation principles with the goal of meeting human and environmental needs, all in an outcomes-oriented manner. Friends of the Verde River convenes the multi-stakeholder group Verde Watershed Restoration Coalition, also known as VWORK. Today, I'll be showcasing the partnership's effort for restoration along Fossil Creek, which is one of the two wild and scenic rivers in Arizona. Fossil Creek's crystal clear blue waters run through central Arizona as a tributary of the Verde River. In the early 1900s, these waters were used to generate power for mining communities in the area. In 1984, Fossil Springs Wilderness was designated, and by 2005, these dams were previously used to generate power were decommissioned. After this, the flow of the creek went from 4 CFS to 40 CFS. In 2009, Fossil Creek received its wild and scenic designation, making it one of the two only wild and scenic rivers in the state of Arizona. 16.8 total miles of Fossil Creek are designated, 7.5 miles are in the middle and they make up the recreation segment, and the upper and lower fossil make up 9.3 miles of the wild segments. Visitation at Fossil Creek has increased greatly. Fossil Creek has become an international destination for recreation. Along with the recreational value, Fossil has five other outstanding remarkable values listed in its wild and scenic designation. The geological value of Fossil is evident when you walk through and see the large travertine system. This travertine system is the fourth largest in North America. Fossil Creek is outstandingly remarkable for its purely native fishery and wildlife habitat. Fossil is the only intact perennial stream without diversions in Arizona. Fossil also has a traditional use value. It's meaningful and sacred to multiple indigenous tribes, including the Yavapai and Apache people. And lastly, water resources are of value for Fossil Creek. Fossil Springs just charge almost a million gallons per hour of spring water. The history of both the wilderness and wild and scenic designations in Fossil Creek would not be possible without the collaborative efforts of community members, forest specialists, NGOs, and more interested parties. And this collaborative effort continues through its management today. This slide shows two of the collaborative efforts for Fossil Creek. Through the Verde Front, a regional collaborative working towards stewardship of natural resources in the Verde Valley, the Fossil Creek Working Group brings together citizens, organizations, agencies, tribes, and local governments to collaborate and participate in discussions surrounding NEPA and the Comprehensive River Management Plan. Areas of focus or in dialogue include protection of Fossil Creek's values, interim management, adaptive management, and monitoring, and capacity building for future efforts in Fossil Creek. V-Work, which will be the main focus collaborative for this presentation, is a multi-stakeholder group made of federal, tribal, and state agencies, private landowners, corporations, and nonprofit organizations all working together on a watershed scale initiative to manage invasive plants, protect wildlife corridors, reduce accelerated erosion, protect water quality, and build stewardship within the Verde watershed. Fossil Creek has been a focus of this group since 2013, when the first contracted on the ground work began in the Fossil Creek area. As a collaborative effort through VWORK, Friends of the Verde River has contracted Arizona Conservation Corps crews of young adults to conduct several years of invasive species treatments in Fossil Creek, most recently in 2019. This work was focused on Middle Fossil, which is the recreation area. The species of focus are Giant Reed, Tamarisk, Tree of Heaven, Russian Olive, and Himalayan Blackberry. Early career botanists 
overseen by friends, also monitor the riparian areas to measure plant community composition and native plant growth. In a combined effort to reduce erosion and control recreation impacts, V-Work has worked to install signs, construct garden trails, and close social trails at many recreation sites throughout Fossil Creek. V-Work partners have also completed seeding projects and road closure projects. Most recently, with support from the National Forest Foundation and Arizona Water Protection Fund, V-Work has expanded restoration efforts to Upper Fossil and Lower Fossil. These areas are far more remote and partially in designated wilderness, so planning and coordination of this work comes with more challenges. This past winter, we were able to contract an AZCC crew to map and monitor a portion of Lower Fossil, and we plan to complete the rest of Lower Fossil mapping and monitoring this upcoming spring. Concurrently, we are working with the Forest Service personnel to complete the Minimum Requirements Decision Guide to evaluate actions in the wilderness area. In this case, the use of herbicide to treat invasive plants. We are hopeful to start invasive treatment on Lower Fossil next fall into winter. V-Work crews will be monitoring and mapping Himalayan blackberry in the Fossil Springs area this spring. Himalayan blackberry has established itself throughout the riparian corridor and is especially growing over the springs. This overgrowth is a major problem for the sensitive fossil spring snail that live in the springs. This overgrowth changes the environment in the springs and the snails are less able to survive this change. We will be establishing a treatment test plot outside of the wilderness boundary and outside of fossil spring snail habitat. We'll be testing out this method and we'll measure the efficacy of it and use our findings to plan for future treatment efforts. Throughout this project, we've had some challenges and we've learned lessons along the way. We'd like to share some of these so we can apply them to other projects. Firstly, when working on restoration in the high use recreation area, because most of the public focus for fossil included recreation issues, we realized that it's important to identify these recreation impacts and how they can com be combined with restoration initiatives. The trail hardening and closures are a perfect example of this. Social trails were a major problem throughout Fossil and constructing rock steps on main trails and closing social trails both helped manage the crowds and also reduced erosion. Another lesson we learned was proper timing for restoration activities. As with most field work, timing is everything. Because fossil is such a high use area, it's very important that this effort is coordinated to not overlap with the bigger, busy recreation season. To avoid crowds, contracted Arizona Conservation Corps crews treated between the months of October and March, which is fortunately also the dormant season and has been our most successful time to treat our species. November and December seem to be our most successful treatment times to avoid crowd, treat plants in dormancy, and try to avoid winter rains. Restoration in the remote wilderness areas of fossil has its own set of challenges. When we proposed this project, we didn't take into consideration the extra planning and approval that is needed when working within designated wilderness. When the project got underway and we realized this time commitment, we were fortunate that both NFF and Arizona Water Protection Fund were understanding of this challenge and allowed timeline changes that we needed to make to make this work possible. Um, we plan to write extra planning time in wilderness proposals in the future. The remote nature of lower fossil has also created a challenge for our planning efforts. Typically, we write a proposal after seeing the state of the riparian area, but due to the difficult access in this area, we hadn't scouted it before securing funding. I don't recommend this. However, we wrote in our proposal that we would be monitoring and surveying the area before we treated it to determine the status and restoration needs. It can take multiple days to get to parts of the riparian area, and by writing our proposal in this way, we can ensure that we have funding for scouting and monitoring. 
In conclusion, I would like to thank the project sponsors, Arizona Water Protection Fund, National Forest Foundation, and the Coconino National Forest. Folks in these organizations have been great partners throughout this project. Special thank you to Danielle Boulay, the Wild and Scenic Rivers Coordinator at the Red Rock Ranger District for sharing information for this presentation and her commitment to protecting Fossil Creek. Also, a big thanks to Arizona Conservation Corps staff and Corps members for their continued partnership in getting stuff done on the ground. It's so meaningful to engage young adults in this restoration, and as someone who worked in Conservation Corps, I'm always elated to work with the Corps members and see them doing meaningful work in the field. And thank you everyone watching for taking the time to learn about our collaborative work in Fossil Creek, and I look forward to answering any questions you may have. Thanks again.